Good afternoon everyone this is Vrishali in my last lectures we discussed about IRS 232 protocol then I2C protocol and also UART protocol we also discussed about some previous units points with practical demonstrations i have mentioned the complete processor architecture playlist link in below description box now in this session we will learn the next protocol that is SPI protocol so let's see we will discuss following points in this session that is introduction about spi protocol spi interface working steps of spi then independent spi versus daisy chain spi communication then steps of spi data transmission with example and advantages and disadvantages so let's see one by one the first point is about spi protocol so basically SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface Protocol and this SPI protocol was developed by Motorola in mid 1980s. This protocol generally used on uh, for short distance purpose. Suppose there is one circuit board and there are multiple devices like microcontroller, then LED, LCD or a microchip, memory chip then analog to digital converter so this all kind of devices are placed on same circuit board so at that time for communication purpose this SPI protocol is used it commonly used the communication between master and all the slave devices we discussed uh, we already discussed master and slave concept in previous lectures generally master means your microcontroller and all the other remaining devices that are present on same circuit board these devices are called as slaves like flash memory, then a sensor, then a real time clock, timer, then analog to digital converter. So these all devices are called as slave. So this SPI protocol perform communication between one master and multiple slaves. This SPI protocol use full duplex synchronous serial communication between master and slave devices. Synchronous serial communication means they use clock signals while communication or while sending and receiving data that's why it is called as synchronous serial communication and uh, this particular SPI protocol send all data master to slave in serial mode or bit by bit data transfer processes there and this SPI protocol uh, data can be set without interruption like we discussed uh, previously UART protocol so where uh, data interruption is generated that's why we use start bit and stop bit there right but here SPI protocol provide this kind of functionality data can be transferred without interruption because data can synchronously send between master and slave devices now see here this is just a basic specification about SPI protocol in this SPI protocol there are four wires are used between master and slave devices maximum speed of data transfer is up to 10 Mbps this is synchronous protocol because they use clock signals while uh, transmitting data they send data in serial mode and for communication purpose there is only one master and multiple slave devices are required see here in this image there is one SPI master and multiple slave devices are there so they perform the communication in between this and these all devices are placed on same circuit board or we can say in small electronics devices so this is just short introduction about SPI protocol now the next point is SPI interface see here in this diagram this is master and slave and they perform the communication using SPI protocol so there are different uh, concepts or components are there see here the first pin is MOSI MOSI stands for master output slave input the second one MISO that is master input slave output then SCLK means serial clock SSCS means slave select and chip select so these pins are present in both master and slave devices now see here there are total four cables are used for communication purpose so let's focus on first pin that is MOSI so MOSI means master output slave input master send output data to the slave and slave receive this output and consider as an input right that's why master output and slave input and master send data to slave that's why this arrow uh, points to the slave direction next master input slave output 
after receiving uh, data from master slave sent response to the master that's why it is called as slave output and this slave output consider as master input right so slave gives response to master that's why arrow from this direction next one is sclk serial clock master sent clock signal to the slave right so at that time this slave is activated because there are multiple slaves are there so always master sends the clock signals to slave now slave select and chip select there is only one master and multiple slaves are there that's why this slave select a uh, pin is used slave select gives direction to the particular slave so these pins are used for communication purpose now the next point is working steps of spi now see here in this diagram there is one master and multiple slaves are there just consider that master means your microcontroller and slave means different devices for example slave 1 means analog to digital converter slave 2 means a sensor and slave 3 means led okay means there are multiple peripheral devices are there so working steps of spi protocol is suppose microcontroller want to send data to all these three slave devices okay at the same time now the first step is it provide a clock signal okay see here where is this is a sclk pin this is your first step first step master send clock signal to every slaves so master send clock signal focus on this red line to slave 1 then again send this signal to slave 2 and again send this signal to slave 3 right so this is your first step master send clock signal to every slave because they send data to each slaves this is your first step second step second step is select slave devices now this master want to send data all these three slave devices right so master send slave select signal to each slave that's why see here there is ss1 means slave 1 so they send signal to slave 1 up to sscs pin then ss2 pin that is slave 2 and ss3 pin that is slave 3 pin so this is your second step first they send clock signals and in second step they send slave select pin okay they uh, select the slave means which slave devices they want to communicate right and third step is they want to send data see here through this mosi pin they send data to each slave mosi pin that is focus on green line they send data to mosi slave 1 again they send data to mosi slave 2 and again they send data to mosi slave 3 so after receiving data from master this slave 1 2 3 again give response focus on blue color line this miso pin master input slave output this pin gives the response see here this arrow slave 1 gives the response then slave 2 again gives the response and slave 3 again gives the response to the master so these are the working steps of special peripheral interface protocol first provide a clock signal master to slave second they select the slave devices on which slave devices they want to communicate and second after that they send the data through mosi pin and they receive data through miso pin okay so in this way this spi protocol works between one master and multiple slave devices next now the next point is independent spi versus daisy chain spi communication now just focus on first diagram i uh, we have already discussed this diagram in previous slide right this is a independent spi method means there is one master okay and multiple slaves are there for example this is your microcontroller and this is analog to digital converter slave 1 slave 2 sensor and slave 3 led so master want to communicate with every slaves uh, separately okay so master first send clock signals this is red color line indicate clock signal then master want to uh, send second step slave select this yellow color line indicate slave select right and third step after that this send data through this green color line right after sending data slave 1 receive the response so slave 1 give the response to master see here this blue color line they give the response to master so this is the independent spi method that we already discussed now just focus on this daisy chain spi communication in the second diagram so here suppose uh, just consider that there is one situation microcontroller want to send data to slave 1 that is analog to digital converter after that 
analog to digital converter send data to sensor that is slave to and then sensor send data to led right so this is a concept of daisy chain spi communication means master send data to slave 1 slave 1 send data to slave 2 and slave 2 send data to slave 3 so this is called as daisy chain communication see here first master send clock signal means this uh, microcontroller want to send data only slave 1 so this red color line indicate clock signals okay and this clock signals again send to slave 2 and again clock signal send to slave 3 because clock signals all always send master to slave only okay this is your first step in second step master send a slave select mode to every slave this yellow color line indicates slave select after that master want to send data see here mosi pin master send data to slave 1 okay means microcontroller send data to analog to digital converter that is slave 1 after that this analog to digital converter send data to slave 2 that is sensor okay so they send data see here they receive data MOSI pin and master input that is slave output means master send data to slave 2 and this slave 2 take as an input of input okay and again slave 2 send data to slave 3 okay so output of slave 2 take input as a slave 3 so this is called as daisy chain communication and at the last this slave 3 send response to the master so particular chain is created in this particular communication right so this is the difference between independent and daisy chain communication independent communication means master separately communicate between each slave devices and daisy chain communication means master communicate slave 1 slave 1 communicate slave 2 slave 2 communicate slave 3 and after that last slave 3 send response to master so this is a independent spi versus daisy chain communication now the next step is SPI data transmission with example. So we already discussed uh, steps previously. So let's take this example. Uh, suppose this is a master and this is a slave. Just consider that this master means your microcontroller and slave means your uh, analog to digital converter. Okay. So first step is master send clock signal to the slave. See here master send this clock signals to slave. This is the first step. In second step master want to send uh, or select the which slave they want to contact okay so master want to select this slave devices so they send slave select signal to this particular slave devices this is your second step now the third step is after uh, getting clock signals and after selecting slave devices master want to send data see here master send data to mosi pin that is master output or slave input pin in 110010 mode okay and msb first is first send and slave devices receive this data at the mosi pin okay this is your third step now fourth step is after receiving data slave gives the response to the master right so they use miso pin master input slave output pin see here 1101 format they gives the response to the master and they send lsb bit first so these are the basic example of master to slave communication using SPI protocol. So last point is advantages and disadvantages of SPI. So the advantages of SPI protocol is no start bit and stop bit required, right? Because uh, SPI protocol uh, with without interruption, they send the data. That's why no start and stop bit is there. No complicated slave addressing. In I2C protocol, each and every slave address is given. But here no slave addressing. Uh, there is a high data transfer rate as compared to I2C protocol and in this SPI protocol separate MISO and MOSI lines are given That's why sending data and receiving data this thing happen parallelly. Okay at the same time The disadvantages of SPI protocols are they use four wires in I2C and UART protocol They use only two wires and no acknowledgement signals are there in uh, SPI protocol and no form of error checking like UART protocol we use parity bit for error checking or for data is change or not purpose but there is no error checking method is there and it allow only single master is there only single master is used multiple masters not used so these are the advantages and disadvantages of SPI so hope so you understood the concept of SPI protocol thank you keep learning